Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. If you've been using C++ for any amount of time, you have probably heard something about the strict aliasing rules and probably have some confusion about where they would come up and what exactly they would mean. And I'm going to attempt in this video to show a real world example of how strict aliasing optimizations may or may not actually affect the speed and quality of your generated code. I was recently at C++ Now 2018, and I was looking over some code that was doing a zero extension of 8 bits into 16 bits or 32 bits. And the code did not look like this, but in my attempt to play with the code, my version looked something like this. And we're going to set a more modern architecture. So I have this unsigned 8-bit value, and I am assigning this to an unsigned 32-bit value, and I am doing exactly 16 of them. I'm making all kinds of assumptions about the amount of data that's available here. And what we can see here in this code will take perhaps just a little bit of explaining, but these 16 values are being moved into SSE registers. And this is saying do a zero sign extension. So it knows that it is an unsigned value and it wants to extend the last, uh, just fill the last bits, the top bits with zeros. And it has unrolled this into something that is able to do all 16 of these operations very quickly in a SSE kind of context. But you'll notice that there is a couple of extra instructions here that might not make a lot of sense. And when I was playing with this, I thought, well, what happens if I want to do a 16-bit source? And what I noticed was the rest of that code just went away. So then I needed to understand what was going on here. And with the 8-bit version, effectively, a character pointer is allowed to alias to other types of data. This applies to character and unsigned character. So if we've got this unsigned 8-bit int here that it doesn't know when it comes into this function if source and destination overlap. It is entirely possible that they are both pointers to the same area of memory, and this would be at least mostly valid thing to do in C++ because we are allowed to copy back and forth between different types of data as long as we do this through a character pointer. So it is having to come in and effectively say, do these two pointers overlap? If they do overlap, then it must jump down to here and move one byte at a time. If they do not overlap, then it is allowed to come in here and do all of these instructions all at once in a much more efficient way. And we can kind of play with the compiler a little bit here. So we're declaring an enumeration that is of size uint 8t and doesn't have any values. So all we're doing is giving the compiler a different type to work with. So if we say that this is now a pointer to something of type data, now we're going to have to do some casting here, but that's okay because it is perfectly valid to cast it to its underlying type. Now the compiler says there's absolutely no way that the source and the destination can overlap each other because they are different types and neither one of them is a const character pointer. So it is then able to get rid of all of the code that checked to see if they overlapped and it is able to do the correct things here. So this is both a comment on how the compiler can optimize this in a good way for you and why you should not alias your pointers. So if we now were to make a call to this extend function,
that looks something like this, the compiler has now generated what is perfectly valid and correct optimization. We have invoked the undefined behavior by using an aliased pointer in a context where this is simply not allowed because we didn't start with something that was a const car star or a unsigned car or something that is a car or a byte or uint8 or one of those types that is allowed in the standard to alias, if you will. And I have greatly oversimplified a few things here, so I'm sure that I will get some comments in the YouTube comments, but I think this is the best, most succinct real-world example that I have seen about how strict aliasing can affect our real code. So be aware of this, and also be aware to use stronger typing when you can, because we have now gotten much more efficient thing from the compiler because we used a stronger type and we had no intention of aliasing these things. So be sure to comment, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links to any of the other videos.